Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a challenging differential equation. A really nice but difficult challenging equation. Now, why did I say this is a difficult equation? Because instead of y double prime, if we had y prime, like let's say if we had y prime equals 2y cubed, this would be easy, right? Don't you think? We could go ahead and write this as dy over dx and then it's separable. There's not even an x in the equation, but the x will come up and we can just solve it. So how do you handle y double prime? In other words, the second derivative. So you got to find a function. Try to understand the context. Try to visualize. You need to find a function whose second derivative equals two times the cube of that function. So one of the things that you can think about, what type of function are we looking for? Could it be a polynomial function? Could it be some type of exponential function? And you can definitely try those, even though it's not always recommended because there's you know different kinds of functions. It could be a combination of so many different things. It could be pretty non-standard. I don't know. So, but let's start looking at some simple cases such as polynomials. For example, could y be a polynomial? Let's think about it, right? If y is a polynomial, what would its degree be? If you don't know, then you can write it in the most general form, which is a sub n, x to the n, a sub n minus 1, x to the power n minus 1, and so on and so forth. Of course, this, will, this would take forever to substitute, but you, t you can take the second derivative. First, you have to take the first derivative. There's no way you can take it directly, right? n, a, n, x to the power n minus 1 plus n minus 1 times a sub n minus 1, x to the power n minus 2, so on and so forth. You could even generalize this, right? write it as a sum using sigma, you know, like you can say, okay, a k, x to the power k, where k runs 0 to infinity. Wait a minute, did you say infinity? I'm not talking about an infinite series, maybe all the way up to n, something like that, right? And if k equals 0, then you get the constant term, basically. So try to cube this expression like it would, be crazy, right? So, and then you're going to differentiate it one more time. So you kind of need to think about the degree here because otherwise it's going to be really, really hard or time consuming. For example, could y be linear? Let's think about it, like ax plus b. If y is linear, then the first derivative is, is, is going to be a constant and the second derivative will be zero because the derivative of a constant is zero, right? So there's no way the second derivative is going to be two times the function cubed. So linear failed. Why? Because of the degree. What about a cubic? Maybe it's a cubic function, ax cubed plus bx squared plus cx plus t, right? If you differentiate it once, you're gonna get a quadratic, three ax squared plus two bx plus c. If you differentiate it one more time, six ax plus two b, or not two b, sorry, I have to say that. And now you want this to be two times y cubed, which is a cubic function already. So you kind of like cubing a cubic, which gives you ninth degree. So there's no way this can be equal. In other words, a polynomial is not going to work in this case. I mean, you've seen with these examples, it's not a proof by any means, but it gives you an idea. The degree just, you know, multiplies. Make sense? So what should we do that? Maybe it is the opposite of a polynomial, what is the opposite? I mean, the reciprocal maybe? Anyways, let's just dive in and do the right thing because this problem would probably, probably be almost impossible to solve without a clever trick. And that's what I'm gonna talk about. So I'll show you a really smart way to do it, but is there another way to do it? Let us know if you know it. Okay, so here's how it goes. We have y double prime equals 2y cubed. That's the equation I'm trying to solve. And y is a function of x, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 2y prime. And you might be questioning, like, why are you doing that? You'll see in a little bit why. But let's multiply first. Trust me on that. And I want to kind of write this as 2 y double prime times y prime, just switch them around. And here I want to multiply the twos and write this as 4y cubed times y prime. Do you see what I see? I hope you do, because we're about to embark on an interesting journey. Okay, 
there's no guarantee that this is going to be super duper straightforward and easy, but I'll show you at least a way to approach it. And also some results from Wolfram Alpha, which I believe you will find very interesting. Okay, so right hand side, if you look at it very carefully, and if you know the rules for differentiation, you're going to realize, okay, 4y cubed is the derivative of y to the fourth power, right? But wait a minute. Are you differentiating with respect to y or with respect to x? The answer is we are always differentiating with respect to x. This is what we're looking for. And for the second derivative, of course, we're looking at something like this. But if you differentiate y to the fourth power, you also get y prime from chain rule. And guess what? We have it. So we're good. Awesome. What about the left-hand side? It is also the derivative of something. I mean, it better be, right? Otherwise, our method is going to fail. But I know it won't. So how do you write this? Hmm, chain rule I got to think about. So it is the first derivative. If I just differentiate the first derivative, I get the second derivative. I do not get the first derivative times the second derivative. So where does that come from? And there's a 2, 2. Okay? So it needs to be y prime squared. If you di differentiate y prime squared, from chain rule, you get the 2 to the front, reduce the power, and then you multiply by the derivative of the inside, which is the second derivative, because it's the derivative of the first derivative. Make sense? Awesome. In other words, this is the derivative of y prime squared. This is awesome, don't you think? Where do we go from here? Well, we kind of have like f prime equals g prime. We have two functions whose derivatives are equal. They're equal up to a constant, of course. So there needs to be some type of constant c because when you differentiate c, you get zero. Awesome. So now we can write the following. y prime squared equals y to the fourth plus a constant. And then we are looking for y. So let's square root both sides. When you square root both sides, you might run into something like absolute value, but don't worry about, don't worry too much about it. I'll just stick with the positive, but the negative is very similar. So let's just take the positive root and this will be the square root of something to the fourth power plus a constant. Now, how do you solve this? Very easy, because notice that we were able to reduce the degree. Now, we're going to write this as dy over dx. And I know some people say, don't do this, don't say that. I will multiply both sides by dx and divide by the radical. So in other words, we're going to get the following dy over square root of y to the fourth plus c equals dx. And this is where the mathematic happens. Ta-da! Hocus pocus, abracadabra. We integrate both sides. That was easy, right? Well, sort of, because how do you integrate something like this? Well, if c is zero, then over simplification in progress, we get this. And again, we're gonna make an assumption. Let's just take this as y squared because it could also be negative y squared. Well, let's just take y squared and it'll be this one. So now the integral of one over y squared, think about it. What is the derivative of one over x? Negative one over x squared. So this will be negative one over y equals x plus c, but c are already used. Let's use k, another constant. Make sense? Awesome, we're so close. Let's multiply both sides by negative 1. We get negative x minus k. But wait a minute. Let's just use k1 here so I can use k. Notice that um, negative k1 it can be written as just plus k. So 1 over y is negative x plus k. And then you're going to reciprocate or switch around. y will be 1 over negative x plus k. Obviously, you could also write it as follows. I think it'll be a little better. So I'm going to stick to this. Never mind. I'm not going to k1. Let's leave it like that. y is going to be 1 over negative x minus k, which I can write as negative 1 over x plus k. This works nicely. Okay, great. Again, this could be a plus minus sign, but I'll just go with this. Now, let's go ahead and test it out. Is this going to work? Well, differentiate it once. You're going to get... 1 over x plus k squared, differentiate it one more time, you're going to get negative 2 over x plus k to the third. Just use the power rule with the negative power, and guess what? This is the same thing as negative 2 
y cubed. I mean positive 2y cubed. Sorry about that. They're both negative, so it should be 2y cubed, which means it satisfies the equation. Is that the only solution? That's a good question. I believe so. But what happens if c is not zero? That is the million dollar question. And Wolfram Alpha is going to answer that. Ta-da! Well, we have an indefinite integral whose result is kind of really weird. But this function right here is the elliptic integral of the first kind with parameter m equals k squared. And this is the inverse hyperbolic sign. Whatever that means for the elliptic integral, it's some complicated function. But at least there's a solution from Wolfram Alpha. Good job on that one because I couldn't solve this integral. Maybe there's a way to do it, but it's probably super complicated. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.